So students, welcome back. In our last video, we studied about the basic concept and definition of chromatography, the various types of chromatography, the classification and the probable questions that may come from those topics. So now let's get on to the part two of the lecture. We'll be starting with partition chromatography. Now, as you know, partition chromatography, the main use of partition chromatography is to separate a mixture of amino acids and peptides. Okay, this is the main answer. This is the main answer that is expected from you all. So let me take out the pen and highlight. S separation of mixture of amino acids and peptides. If it comes as an MCQ, you need to click partition chromatography or any of the options of partition chromatography. The principle being the molecule get partitioned. Okay, it becomes separated between the stationary and mobile phase depending on the relative affinity to each one of these phases. It can be done in two ways. Number one, paper chromatography and number two, TLC. So let us discuss these two one by one. These are actually very easy and these are the procedures that are also given in practical exam. So remember, out of all of these chromatographic procedures for <coughs> medical students, these two, the uh, principles and the procedures of partition chromatography, that is paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography are important for practical as well. Other varieties of chromatography that I'll be talking about in other lectures are not so important for practical point of view. Those are only important for theoretical. So in case of paper chromatography, what happens? We use a paper. Okay. We use a paper that is cellulose acetate paper in order to separate a mixture of colored compounds over here we will separate a mixture of protein you can separate anything any color which consists of mixture of different colors so it can be a black ink which is consisting of yellow green red as its components so it's a variety of liquid partition chromatography number one it can be used in separation of anything that is detectable and having a color reaction so amino acid even carbohydrates, sugars and sugar derivatives. So remember, a complex mixture of carbohydrates can also be separated by paper chromatography. So what is done? The As I told you, the stationary phase over here, the one which is fixed and which is a support is actually filter paper, which is made up of cellulose acetate. So remember, cellulose acetate paper is the key ingredient of paper chromatography. And the mobile phase is generally mixture of immiscible solvents okay some solvent that is not fully miscible with water those are mainly non-polar solvent number one butanol it's often called one butanol or it can be other than or it can be n butanol butyl alcohol and the other immiscible liquids are acetic acid aqua solution of acetic acid and phenol water ammonia for practical purposes for Indian medical students and most of the medical students across the world, the thing that is used is 1-butanol. So remember a stationary phase that is cellulose and mobile phase which is mixture of water and another immobile immiscible solvent that is 1-butanol. Now what is the technique? What is done? You see, I'll tell you this is a piece of paper in which the whole thing is done. So this cellulose acetic paper in on this paper a spot of the mixture is added okay a spot of the mixture is added and then it is dipped in a liquid and the liquid will go up on capillary action thus separating the ingredients so let us see a small spot of sample is applied to the strip of chromatography paper about two centimeters from the base it will not be done absolutely at the end okay because the end will be put in the uh, liquid level we will just apply the spot just above 2 centimeters from the side and then the sample is absorbed into the paper and may form interaction. Okay, that is immaterial. You first need to put a spot of the mixture onto one end of the cellulose acetate paper. Then what happens? The paper, that end of the paper is dipped in the solvent. The solvent is made up of one water and another is immiscible or immobile fluid which is one butanol and you know the whole thing is sealed it happens in a glass container so we need a chromatography chamber so a glass simple glass chamber with a seal so that the vapor is already saturated with one butanol so what happens when we dip the paper onto the fluid 
fluid rises via the capillary action because cellulose acetate paper has got micro capillaries in between and when the fluid goes up or the fluid goes through the cellulose acetate paper it drags the solute along with it so see the procedure is different component different compounds in the sample mixture travel at different rate due to differences in solubility in the solvent very important as the solvent drags the fluid each one of the component has got different solubility okay and that is the principle how those will get separated all right because they have got different attraction to cellulose acetate because we know the partition chromatography acts on the principle of differences in interaction with the stationary phase so it can take from one minute to several minutes so let's recall what we do we apply a dot okay we apply a dot at the end just from the end two centimeters from the gap and then that end is dipped into a, a fluid in a glass chamber which is actually sealed and then water will go water of the mobile phase solvent will go up along with the capillary action thus separating the fluid based on the principle that each and every solute has got different interaction with the solid phase stationary phase and has got different solubility with the mobile phase so as you can see from if over here the cellulose acetate paper is dipped in this liquid liquid will go up by the capillary action the same can be done in a reverse phenomena where liquid is poured from above okay so based on this two this can be either ascending chromatography or descending chromatography the one which you saw just now is ascending chromatography because water ascends it goes up in its cap by its capillary reaction against gravity however in descending chromatography both gravity and capillary reaction comes into play so remember a spot on a cellulose acetate paper that is dipped in a solvent where water can go up or down based on its capillary action and or gravity is known as paper chromatography so if we are separating a mixture of protein amino acid those are colorless so how can we determine the final spot up to which the protein component has traveled answer is very simple by performing a color reaction of protein and the most common color reaction of protein is nin hydrin reaction okay we can use ultraviolet light or iodine vapor if the solution are carbohydrate you know carbohydrate from starch iodide test it it varies but for your pur practical purposes know that separation of amino acid is finally diagnosed with nin hydrin test and the piece of paper that finally is found as a result which contains multiple spot of the separated components is known as chromatogram okay chromatogram uh, a gram is any graph in a written format so ecg if you get ecg strip of paper the electrocardiography is the procedure electrocardiograph is the machine and electrocardiogram is the ecg strip anyway the so what's the factor that finally determines up to which a solute will be separated that is determined by the component known as retention factor or rf okay this is nothing is simply the ratio of distance traveled from the spot or the origin of the spot to the of the distance traveled by the spot from the origin by the solvent what i mean is when you apply a component or a spot at a region and dip the whole thing into the solvent the solute will travel to some extent and the solvent will travel to some extent so both the differences the ratio of both the distances travel give the rf value so again i am re repeating over here distance traveled by the sample is to distance traveled by the solvent so this is very important this is very important it is asked in viva okay rf value very important so rf value is the factor by which you can predict or we can predict the movement of the solute particle so remember if rf value of a solution is zero it means the solution remains in the stationary phase and it will not move at all okay numerator becomes zero right and if rf value equals to one it means what the distance traveled by the sample and distance traveled by the solvent will be the same so the solvent the amount which till the solvent will move it will drag the sol solute along with it so normally what happens you see two diagrams before 
this is the solvent front the solvent imagine you are soaking a piece of paper in a uh, water okay you can see the water is soaked till certain limit so this is the solvent front up to which solvent has traveled but the solutes will stop over here here and here depending on their interaction with the stationary phase so this is the difference so ratio of this is to the whole thing will be the rf value of the blue spot you get my point so this is the rf value which is very important and one thing you should note what is two dimensional chromatography two dimensional chromatography is nothing but often a um, component or mixture is very difficult to separate then it contains too many components so what will happen a drop is first added okay and then it is dipped in the solvent so it will travel the water or the solvent will travel and it will separate the whole thing depending on how many components are there so see these are the amount of spots that have been formed in the next step what is happening we just tilt the whole thing 90 degree so that the this end now is dipped in the solvent okay so this is now the new solvent end this one this is the one and then the solvent will again push the whole mixture to in this direction so it's a difficult concept to understand but if you are doing it step by step it's easy so first one dimensional and then the whole thing is turned and then it moves along the other axis so it is two dimensional chromatography so remember guys if you are asked significance of proper chromatography you don't need to remember all of these points okay these are just given for your knowledge remember only one or two at your level separating a mixture of amino acid oligopeptide sugar etc etc so carbohydrate or proteins mixture they are separated and if examiner asks you what else something more then you can mention drugs like penicillin tetracycline and streptomycin you know any nutrient for example steroids and vitamins can also be separated so anything that comes in your mind okay carbohydrates proteins not lipids mind it because lipid is soluble in one butanol and they are separated by other means not by paper chromatography so carb mixture of carbohydrate mixture of lipids mixture of vitamins and drugs can be separated by paper chromatography so this is all about paper chromatography we will give a pause over here after which we'll go into the next section which is thin layer chromatography which is nothing but application of the same thing but in a better and precise way so please go back recap the whole thing recap what's there in paper chromatography recap the procedures what is rf value and then we'll go into the next part for which it will be much easier for you to understand the tlc